Hey YouTube, Captain Mark here from King's Landing Sport Fishing, and today I am jazzed about this video. I can't wait to you know start this project, and I'm so excited to be sharing this project with all of you, uh, really every step of the way as I produce this uh, this video series. Uh, and I'm actually talking about uh, Garmin Pen Optics. Uh, for many of you, you might know that uh, you know our TR 2700 was uh, received a ground up restoration about five years ago, and at that time. You know, had uh, oh my gosh, probably fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in new electronics installed, and uh, frankly, it's been nothing but problem. So when we got our uh, when we got our second boat, King's Landing Two, our Trojan Eleven Meter, we actually predominantly put Garmin electronics on that boat, and it's been fantastic. Great electronics, straight out of the box. So it's time for me to start to put some Garmin product on the the Tierra 2700, which is the boat I predominantly use and run charters off it. So, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about pen optics today and, you know, call it the setup we're going to be installing on the Tierra 2700 for, you know, salmon and trout trolling uh, on the Great Lakes, or you could use the same setup uh, on the ocean. Uh, you know, as I scoured the internet, YouTube, whatever it may be, it's a bit of the best kept secret. Most guys are a bit quiet, I think, on how to set up their pan optics and how they're doing it. Um, and you know what? With some of the some of the sales that happened over the you know Boxing Day this year, it, it's really becoming quite affordable. And I want to take you on this journey with me uh, when it comes to pan optics. So today's video is all about the you know the setup I'm going to use uh, on the boat. Uh, going to go over some of the parts, why we're doing things a certain way. And then throughout this series, there'll be a number of other videos that we'll go through that will really hopefully um, share some of the tips and tricks and how we're using pen optics on the on the boat. So pretty excited. Um, you know what I would say to you though, if you haven't uh, done so already, please don't forget to click on that subscribe button and that like button. When if you do that, you'll get notified when we produce a video, and I think that'll be great for you. I really do plan to have a number of videos. In this uh, in this series uh, on Garmin Pan Optics, so let's dive right in first and talk about the agenda for today's video. What you can expect. So first of all, in a moment, I'm going to go through like what actually is Pan Optics. Um, the second thing I'm going to cover on is what are the parts that we selected for our Pan Optics installation on our Tierra Open 2700. I'm then also going to talk about why we selected the PS30 transducer versus some of the other models that Garmin makes. I'm going to talk about what's different about our transducer installation. It's a very key difference to a standard, uh, you know, pan optics installation, including, you know, if I think about the guys, uh, the guys I share the dock with uh, at my marina, there's a few with pan optics. They are not installing it the way we're installing it. So I want to talk a little bit about that. And then I'm going to probably, you know, I've got, uh, I've got some boxes here. You know, here's my, uh, here's my transducer box. But I'm going to do a bit of an unboxing and show you what's inside these boxes. And, uh, and then lastly, I want to talk about some of the other videos you can expect in this series. So it probably will be a little bit of a longer uh, video. I apologize. But there's just so much to cover in this particular, uh, in this particular video uh, as we really kick off this, you know, called Project Pen Optics, as I've mentioned in the, uh, on the side here. So with that, let's talk about what is, uh, what is Garmin Pen Optics. So the best way to put it is, um, pen optics is like, you know, I think Garmin used the words as an all-seeing sonar, unlike anything you've ever seen on the water. And, and reason being is it allows you to see what's going on around your boat or in your spread in, uh, in real time. So let's say, like we're going to use it for trolling, but let's say you're a, you're a bass fisherman. You know, you can literally ca have your pen optics on. Cast your bait, and then you can see your bait, you know, land in the water, how it starts to sink in the water, and then you can see yourself retrieving it, and if you've got any fish swimming towards it or not. You know, when it comes to us for trolling, you can actually see your, um, you can see your gear in the water, so you can see your cannonballs. In some cases, you can see your flashers, your lures, and you can start to actually see um, what the fish are doing. You know, if I flip over to, uh, you know, call it my next page here, I've actually got a, a video here, and this is a video from uh, a friend of mine. It's from Jason Neglia, who he's he's actually uh, pro staff with Team Garmin. He's from uh, you know the tournament team Kings Inc. And uh, you know Jason's been running Pan Optics for a number of years, both in the standard configuration and in what I've coined the flipped configuration. But what you can see here in this video is you can actually see um, how the fish move. So you can see the fish moving into into moving into Jason's spread. Um, and in this case, is a, there's a series of, uh, 
of um, stagers. But that's where it really gets different. When you look at your traditional sonar, you know, what you're looking at is you're looking at the past. You know, when, when you've passed over that, it's already behind you. When you think about, uh, you know, Garmin Pan Optics, you know, it's essentially what's right behind your boat, or in some cases, depending on your installation, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, what's actually underneath your boat. And that, I think, is, you know, that is really a difference maker uh, when it comes to Garmin Pan Optics. So, you know, a big thank you to, uh, to Jason Neglia, like I said, from Kings Inc. He's a member of Team Garmin. Um, you know, he's really been super helpful for me as I've been putting together this project and really giving me some advice, giving me some various screenshots and such. Um, so big thank you to Jason. And actually, he's someone I do hope to get later on in this series, do a bit of an interview with uh, with Jason around uh, around uh, using Garmin Pack Pen Optics. Because as I think about, you know, the North Shore of Lake Ontario, he's probably had the most experience with, uh, with Pen Optics. And, you know, has probably been trying to get me to make the jump to Pen Optics for a number of years. And I'm super pumped to, to be doing it. So now, let's talk about uh, the Pen Optics installation on uh, my particular boat, RTR 2700. So first of all, what am I going to use for, you know, I call it the head unit, you know, the, the, the main MFD. And we're using a Garmin Echomap UHD 95 SV. Now, uh, whether it be a 93 SV, 94 SV, or a 95 SV, they're essentially the same unit. The biggest difference between a 93 and a 94 and a 95, that, that number counts or stands for the maps installed. So if it's a 93, I believe that is the U.S. Uh, inland, uh, inland Lakes maps. And 94, I believe, is the, is the U.S. coastal maps. And the 95 SV is Canada. So I'm in Canada, so I'm using a 95 uh, SV. Um, you know, this was a, I got a great deal on this. It was uh, one of the, uh, you know, Bass Pro or Cabela's Boxing Day sales. Uh, I picked it up. You know, the crazy part was I actually picked the unit up for myself before Christmas. And then literally two days later, a buddy of mine sent me a flyer and showed me it was on sale. And, uh, you know, fortunately, working with such a big, uh, big company, they price smashed it instantly. And uh, I got a great deal on the Echomap UHD 95 SV. Now, I would say the, the UHD 95 SV, it is not Garmin's top of the line. They do have the, uh, the Echomap Ultra series. And then they've also got the GPS Map series. A couple of things I will say. The Echomap UHD that I've got is a, is a great unit. The one that I'd call it, I'd say call it two downfalls that I will call out uh, for this unit. Number one, it's only got one network port and the Pen Optics uses the network port. So if I want to add multiple units, I'll need to get Garmin's uh, network hub or network switch, which is not a big deal. If I'd have purchased an Ultra unit, the Ultra unit has two network ports and a higher resolution screen, but I'm not too worried about that. You know, the, one of the other downsides with the Echo Map is... Um, it's really designed for inland lakes, so it uh, it does not have uh, radar capabilities. You know, if someone was uh, you know doing covering more coastal waters, they would actually go with a GPS map unit. So I'm, I'm just telling you guys because if you're setting up your pen optics and you're in coastal waters, or you know having a radar is a must for you, uh, I would recommend going with a GPS map series versus the Echo Map. I went with the Echo Map here, as this is a unit on the back of my boat. Uh, and I already have uh, a whole other slew of electronics, including a radar right now. In the future, I absolutely plan to uh, convert over the rest of the boat to Garmin. And probably when I make my next purchases and I, you know, buy my units for the Dash, I'll probably go with GPS maps series. I'll probably swap out the, uh, the UHD 95 SV so I can actually network everything together. But that's the first part of my uh, setup. Echomap UHD 95 SV. The second piece, I bought the combo, came with a Garmin GT54 transducer. It is a high and wide transducer, uh, you know, that I'm going to put on the put on the back of the transom to uh, be tied right into this uh, this Echomap UHD. And that will really, I'll use that as much as it's got uh, down imaging and side imaging, which you know, depending on uh, you know how shallow in the water I'm fishing in, I might use some of those features in the in the spring. Um, for me, I'm going to probably use that more in it for, as a traditional sonar, um, you know, scanning down behind the back of the boat. The next piece, very, very important. I'm using the Garmin PS30 Panoptics transducer. 
I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the future as I do a comparison to the various different transducers. But for me, it is the PS30 transducer versus the 31 or versus the live scope. The other, uh, you know, I'm going to call it little black box I'm using is I'm actually going to be using a Garmin bare wire transducer to 12 pin sounder wire block. And it's, I don't actually have that yet, but it's a small, uh, you know, call it black box. On my, uh, on my Tierra, we've actually got multiple transducers installed today. So I've got a, I've got a B60 through hull. I've got a P66 uh, transom and a P58 transom uh, across the, the current electronics. And part of that is, I like to have various different transducers for redundancy, as I've had the, the unfortunate experience of having a transducer go out on me, um, and it was actually right before a major tournament. So now I actually have redundancy on the back of the boat. What's neat about this box, though, is I can actually cut the plug off uh, one of my transducers already installed in the boat that is um, tied to my um, other um, call it electronics system from a different manufacturer and I can wire it into this black box and I can actually wire in the B60 or the P66 into the Garmin, uh, you know, U Echomatch UHD 95 SV. So that's what that little box is for. And then the last two items here, uh, you know, uh, I've got the Rytec, uh, you know, stainless steel mounts. So I'm going to put their GT series mount um, with, uh, with the GT54. Uh, you know, it's a solid stainless steel, really robust mount. And then one of the unique or different aspects of this installation is I'm going to be using a Rytec PS31 mount. And I'm going to be mounting my Garmin PS30 to this Rytec PS31 mount. And that's, I'll talk about it a little bit later as to why uh, the benefits. And then the last piece of this project I am going to be using is I'm going to be using uh, some, Gar some Rytec transducer mounting boards. So I'm going to be using some of their some of their standard ones like this, as well as uh, some custom ones on this project that'll be custom made uh, for the back of the uh, back of the Tierra. So let's uh, let's dive right in and talk about the the transducers. Garmin make a ton of different transducers with their pen optics or live scope um, capabilities. I've got three of what I'd say are probably the more popular transducers. You know. Starting, you know, you know, call it left to right. I've got the uh, the PS30, which is what I've purchased. You then got the PS31, which um, can be either pole mounted or transom mounted. That is, uh, you know, call it a uh, forward looking, uh, you know, transducer. And then you've got the new uh, on the far right of the screen here. You've got the new live scope transducer. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the differences here. So. When you think about the, you know, call it the PS30 and the PS31, I'd say there's a lot of similarities. They both have a live view beam of 120 degrees by 40 degrees. They both uh, operate at a 417 kilohertz frequency, and they're both comfortable with a max depth of 300 feet. Where we get into the difference is the PS30 is, you know, I call it a down view transducer, whereas the PS31 looks forward. And, uh, and that, those are the biggest differences of, of these particular two transducers. When we think about the Live View, which is actually the newest transducer, the Live View transducer is actually a bit of a combo transducer because it, it can actually do forward and down imaging. It can be mounted on a pole or it can be mounted on the transducer. Transducer, sorry. Or the transom, I mean. Where, uh, where it's got some differences, its max depth is 200 feet. It does run at a uh, you know, frequency range of 550 to 1100 kilohertz. But you know the single biggest difference, and frankly why I'm not going with this on my particular installation, it is the more narrow beam width. You know, the, uh, the, the live view beam um, on the live scope and the, the transducer on the far right with the black box it's, it's 120 degrees by 20 degrees. Uh, you know, best way for me to put it, if you know, a lot of guys that are uh, salmon trollers on whether the Great Lakes or the oceans, when we typically use a standard transducer like a B60 or a P66, those are, those are 50 slash 200 transducers. But, you know, we'll use the 50 because it's got the wide cone. I think it's got a 45 degree cone that you can cover more area. While the 200, I think, is about a 12 or 15 degree cone, it's much, much narrower. 
So that's the downside when I when I think about you know trolling for salmon when you're when you're downrigging on the Great Lakes or the Pacific is really the the narrower beam on the live scope versus the original pen optics uh, PS31. So as you can see, I've I've kind of highlighted here in a in a in a box we're using the PS30 in this installation. The PS30 is the is the transducer that I'm going to recommend. It is a down imaging transducer. Uh, and, uh, you know, if I talk to a number of guys running pen optics for salmon trolling, they're using the PS30. So, now if I flip to the next page, what I'm going to show you actually is I'm going to talk a bit about the beam. And, as I've mentioned earlier, I am, uh, I'm, I'm installing this in a, in a bit of a different way. So, what, I'm gonna, what I've got, kind of got shown here is I've got the standard installation with a PS30 using its factory bracket. And then I'm going to talk about, you know, the flipped installation. So what you can see here, I mentioned that, you know, the PS30 is a 120 degree by 40 degree. So what that does is, in its standard configuration, where it is bolted on the back of the boat, you know, back of the transom, like so, you would, um, you would essentially have a 120, de 120 de degree cone from port to starboard. You know, call it left to right. And then you've got a 40 degree cone, you know, call it behind the boat. That, in the standard installation, it, it's pretty cool because you can still see your downriggers, you can still see fish swimming in and out. Um, in some cases, you can actually see your, uh, your dipsy divers further out uh, behind. And you know what, you can start to see fish coming into your spread and leaving. And you know what? It works incredibly well. Like I said, I got a few guys on my dock that have the Panoptics PS30 installed in this configuration and they, they love it. And, it. and it works well. That being said, what I find as I've, uh, as I've played around with them, one of my friend's boats, um, while I can see the cannonball, I cannot, get, I cannot see separation between the cannonball and the, call it the flasher or the cannonball and the spoon. You know, everything kind of looks at just one big, one big dot. And you know, if you get a, if you get a salmon swimming in, you'll see the salmon swimming in. But when it starts to get in, you know, call it behind that cannonball, it, it gets lost. I find. So that's a standard configuration. But what we're doing in this particular case is we're taking the transducer and we are actually flipping it using the Rytec, you know, PS31 mount. So instead of, uh, you know, call it what I call a right to left installation or a port to starboard installation, we are doing a um, front to back insta insta installation. So call it, you know, bow to stern. And that's, uh, and that's neat because as you look at, as you look at the, the flipped installation here, that 120 degree cone is now actually going to give you, you know, underneath your boat and in front of your boat, you know, typically you can get 50, 60, 70 feet. So when I'm running a 27 Tierra, I'm probably going to easily get, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet in front of the boat. And then I'm getting 50, 60, 70 feet behind the boat. What's neat about this installation is you can actually start to see you, a couple things. You can start to see separation. So I can see my cannonball. I can see my flasher and possibly even my lure. And that way, if a, if a fish sl swims past your cannonball, you can actually see, is it the cannonball that they're attracted to? Is it the flasher or is it the bait based on where they actually are on the uh, on the screen, on the picture? So when you start to look, and if you go back to that first video I showed you at the beginning, when you start to think about that, that was actually a flipped configuration. So you can see the fish, you know, they're actually, in that video, they were coming from the front of the boat, underneath the boat, and then uh, around the downriggers. So that's the, that's the advantage of this configuration. I'm going to get to see a front back view versus a side to side and get a lot of separation between my cannonballs, my baits and, and the flashers slash the fish. So that's neat. The, the 40 degree cone angle down here, it, it's, uh, it, it's a good enough, uh, it's a good enough uh, width that you can still on a, on a boat like mine have no problem picking up the two or three uh, downriggers. The only downside in this installation is I'm probably not going to be able to pick up my my dipsy divers when when I've got those things uh, set back, you know, two three hundred feet. It, it's it's not going to it's not going to pick those up. But you know, as I talk about this, 
This is why I'm running the PS30 here and not the live scope. Because the live scope has only a 20 degree angle. So if I had the live scope, you know, where that angle is about 40 degrees, it'd be so much narrower. Chances are, I would struggle to pick up all of my downriggers um, with the live scope. Not impossible. I do know some folks that have the live scope. Um, but what I'm finding is the guys that have the live scope and they use it for salmon trolling, they're typically actually installing it on a pole so they can twist and tilt and maneuver the pole to pick up whatever downrigger or whatever item they're looking for at, uh, at that time. So that's really um, the difference with this installation. You know, rather than doing the standard installation, we're actually doing, uh, you know, the flipped installation. So uh, I'm more concerned or more, I want to know what's going on in front of the boat as I'm trolling towards it. And then I want to see the, I want to see what the fish are doing, not only under my boat, but then what they're doing in my spread and get that separation uh, across the spread. So... That's, that's a bit of a, you know, talking about the beam widths and talking about our installation. You know, if I, if I go further now, what I would say is I'm going to talk a bit about uh, some of the items I'm going to be using in the, uh, in the installation. So, start off, I've got my Garmin Echomap UHD 95 SV. And it's been killing me not to open this box. But I wanted to open it with you guys. So, what do we got? First of all, we've got the Garmin... Uh, Cover, screen protector cover. Really, really important, especially in the sun. As I open this up, I have my Garmin unit. And these units are really cool because most of your typical sonar units you buy, they've actually, uh, they got, you know, plugs on the back. This one does not. This one's got one plug because it actually snaps into a cradle, which I find is, is super cool. You know, for me, I really don't need to be moving this around. But, you know, if I was an ice fisherman or I had a second boat, I might actually buy a set, uh, you know, just a second cradle. I mean, I could move my head units um, between. Obviously, as I go through the box here, I've got, a, I've got some installation uh, template. I got a cool Garmin sticker. And let's see what else I got as I keep opening up the box. And now I, I get into, I've got, obviously, power wiring harnesses. I've got some screws, and then you men I mentioned earlier, a cradle. This is the cradle. So this is actually what gets mounted on the boat. In my case, I'm going to mount this on the back of the boat, but if you flip over the back, now you can see there's all of the various different plugs for, you know, the uh, the, the network or panoptics, the sonar, the Nemia 2000, and the power plug. And, you know, on my boat, I'm going to use all these. I'm going to have, obviously, the power plug. I am going to hook this up to my uh, my autopilot. It's a different manufacturer, but with Nemia 2 2000, I can integrate those together. I'll, I'm going to run the GT54 or um, my P66. I haven't decided which one will be my main one to start in the sonar, and then obviously the pen optics will be in the big uh, the big network port. And then as I continue going through the box, I've got a mass uh, a big stack of wires and bracketry this is the gt54 transducer I'm not going to bother opening the package but that is the gt54 transducer that i will also be uh, mounting on the uh, the back of the boat and what i'm going to do is i'm actually uh, very fortunate here i've got a uh, i've got one of the new Ritec gt uh stainless steel mounts these things are like bulletproof you know I was joking around that you could probably jack up the back of your boat with these mounts. They're so they're so solid, um, and you know they give you a lot of ability to maneuver. You know up and down with the holes. You know you've got pretty much unlimited radius, or you know maybe not unlimited, but you know call it almost 180 degrees of radius. And uh, and the other super cool thing, I'm not sure if you can notice it. I'll try and show you. You've actually got a deflector on the back to you know try to prevent or stop rooster tails. So that'll be the mount that I actually use for that GT uh, that GT54 mount. So anyways, let's uh, let's quickly put this away and then we'll get to uh, some of the other items I'll be uh, I'll be using on this uh, on this on this installation. Okay, so let's get this head unit put away. And there we go. Okay. So that's, that was the head unit. 
Now let's open up the uh, PS31. Sorry, not PS31, PS30, Garmin PS30. I always mix them up. I'm using a PS30, but I'm using the PS31 mount from Ritex. So you need a PS30. So first thing I'll tell you as I open up this box, this transducer is heavy. I seem to recall, and it's big, it's big and heavy. I seem to recall this transducer is about four pounds. So it's not uh, not light by any means. Uh, you know, don't uh, don't go cheapening out on the number of screws you put on. You don't want to lose this thing. But you got a, you know, you've got a, you've got a transducer here. You can see it's quite a large transducer. It's got two sets of mounts. Uh, sorry, wires. The first set of wires is actually the, you know, got a network or an Ethernet plug on it. Uh, that is how the transducer communicates with the um, with the head unit. And then you've got your second set of wires here. That is uh, pretty simple. It is a power and ground. It's the power. And uh, the one thing I will tell you in the inst instruction manual, uh, they do recommend you put a switch on this. So you can actually turn it on and off, which I think is a great idea. And then, you know, if I continue to open up the packaging here, you know, here we go. You tell I haven't opened the stuff yet. You also have, you know, the Garmin, the Garmin mount. So this is the Garmin PS30 mount. It's it's the factory mount. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to be using the Ritec, the Ritec PS31 mount. But uh, since uh, since I've got you guys all here, you know, I might as well show you because uh, a bit of a, a bit of a treat thanks to Ryan at Ritec. I actually also have a Ritec a Ritec PS uh, PS30 mount to show you as well. If, for those of you that don't want to do the flip configuration, I, I do want to show you uh, since Ryan. Let me let me one to show off. So this is the uh, this is the PS31 mount that I'll be using. You can see it's got what I call a you know a north south or a bow to stern configuration. You know as it goes on your on your transom. But you know the Ritec crew also make a PS30 mount. Very very heavy duty mount as you can see. Lots of adjustability. They've got them. They've got them both. I won't be using this one. Nothing wrong with the mount. It's just a different different uh, orientation for that transducer. You know, myself, as I mentioned, I'm going to be using this PS uh, this uh, this PS31 mount. The one thing I do like about these mounts from Ritec, you can see that same deflector. He's got the GT mount. He's put that on the PS uh, the PS31 mount. It's really important on this mount because um, it's very well known that when you take one of these mounts, put it. Um, right at the bottom of your transom because you want to get it down as low as possible and then actually you know you end up tilting it down a little bit that you can get some wicked rooster tails with the uh, with the factory mount and this modified mount um, prohibits or stops those rooster tails so that's uh, that that's pretty cool uh, and a big uh, big thanks to to Ryan from Ritec for you know providing me the uh, the PS uh, the PS30 mount so I can show you guys that one as well so that's uh, that's a bit of an intro into this uh, into this series. Um, you know, I do want to talk about what you can expect next from this this series of Pan Optics videos. Uh, first of all, it's January uh, it's January fifteenth uh, or sixteenth today, so uh, it's cold. It's away. It's wrapped up. Um, but what am I going to do in this series of videos? First of all, I absolutely want to bring you uh, a video where I we meet with Jason from uh, you know Team Garmin. You know, he's pro staff for Team Garmin. Uh, he runs Kings Inc. It's a tournament team here in the North Shore of, uh, of Toronto, Canada. And uh, he's been using Pen Optics for probably two or three years. So absolutely plan to do a QA and a with, uh, with Jason so he can talk us through um, many of the learnings that I know he's, uh, he's experienced as he made the, uh, the transition from a different uh, electronics manufacturer to a Garmin and then to uh, Garmin Pen Optics. Uh, I also plan to bring uh, Ryan from Ritec onto the channel and have him talk about uh, his mounts and what some of the benefits and, and features are of his mounts and specifically as we start to think about this this project Panoptics. And then I also then plan to actually then start giving you some, uh, you know, call it tutorials around the installation. You know, videos as I'm actually starting to inst install this on the boat. So, you know, that'll include, you know, installing the transducers on the on the transom how I'm thinking about where I'm mounting the unit on the back of the boat and, 
and how I'm wiring it up. Um, and even it may even go as far as, you know, if I do uh, network it to the, uh, to the existing autopilot, you know, even talking about that networking. And then, and then lastly, once it's all up and running on the boat, I've got to show you some videos of how this thing's in action. So I share that because, like I said, this is going to be a, hopefully a series that I continue to build on, but it's not going to be videos that you're going to see coming in the next few weeks because it's January. You know, I won't be able to get you the on-the-water videos until probably May. So, um, but I, I will definitely try to um, keep bringing you back different videos on, on Panoptics and have different folks, uh, uh, you know, coming on to talk about uh, their involvement in either using Panoptics, uh, Panoptics or, you know, as we think about this, uh, this project. So, hopefully you found uh, this kickoff video useful as we talk about, you know, um, the parts, parts I'm using, what Panoptics is, you know, some of the benefits and, and how we're, how we're going to be installing it. As I said at the beginning, I am super pumped. I can't wait to have Panoptics uh, on the boat. You know, full of honesty, I, I, I wish I could, you know, convert the whole boat to Garmin right now. That's a bit of an undertaking, you know, financially. So I'm starting with the, I'm starting with the back of the boat and the, um, the Panoptics uh, um, unit. But I, I can't wait to convert the whole boat. Anyways, enough of me today. Um, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button. And if you like this video, please click the like button. And I can't wait to bring you more videos in this series. It's going to be fantastic. And also, if you got questions, you got comments, don't forget, post them in the description. I read all the comments, all the questions. You know, it might even help me with something to bring up at a, at a later video. So big, big thank you, folks. Have a, great, uh, have a great rest of your day. And I look forward to talking more to you about the Panoptics Project. Talk to you later. Goodbye.